Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next Star Wars comic review. This one's going to be for Star Wars Kanan, issue number 11, the second last issue of the series, and overall, I think this is just an okay issue. I don't think it's bad, I also don't think it's particularly, like, amazing. Like, this is obviously the kind of action issue. We ended last last time out with um, Grievous confronting Depa Balaba, and uh, the kind of Kage warrior, or whatever you want to call him, confronting uh, Caleb. And so, okay, these two fights are going to happen. This is the third battle of Mike Ito. We know they're going to make it out, and the next battle is going to be Kaller, which is where, obviously, Devil Blobba dies. That's when Order 66 takes place. So, this is meant to kind of fill the gap between the last little bit of, I suppose, uh, Kanan's past that we really need to know. Um, we start, as ever, with the comic with the kind of present day stuff on Kaller. Obviously the rebel group, you know, Hera, Zeb, Ezra, Sabine, Kanan's injured in the back of the tank. They've just been captured by the stormtroopers. That's what's happened here. The stormtroopers call in are, are basically like, should we kind of bring them back to the ship or should we execute them here? And Kanan, still in the back of the tank, hears this and it's basically, you know, should we do perform the execution here on Kaller? And the connection we're meant to make here is that the execution on Kaller, the connection there is that uh, Order 66 also took place on Kaller and it was an execution. Depa Blob was executed by Order 66 and now he's returned to this planet that obviously holds so many bad memories for him and potentially his whole crew is about to be executed again. That's what's happening here and then they, they, they specifically make the connection here by the fact that um, the warrior that he's facing says, you'll face your execution now as well. So the, the situation we're in here is that this this kind of samurai bounty hunter guy has just killed Stance, obviously Caleb's um, clone uh, trooper friend, and he basically just mocks him saying that like, it, the killing a clone barely counts as a kill because you know what life does a clone have to lose? And they sort of set up a little bit of a dark side kind of thing for Caleb here that he says, for the first time in my life, I wanted to kill. You know, he charges at um, this guy who's, whose name, we, we knew his name from before. I just keep forgetting it because he's not a very good character particularly well. Coburn Seer, that's his name. Coburn Seer, I'm just going to call him Seer. Um, so that's his name. And he just, you know, charges at him. The guy's a flamethrower. You know, we're having some action stuff happening. While Depa Balaba confronts General Grievous and... The, the whole back and forth that they have is that the last time we fought, I defeated you. The only mistake I made was not confirming that you had for sure been killed. But Depa Blaba obviously renewed. She now has a Padawan. She's changed. Caleb has changed her a little bit. She basically says, you knew how to defeat me back then, but the Jedi that you fight right now is different. You won't, you don't know how to defeat me. Whereas I'm different. I know how to defeat you. And... She gains the advantage here in that she um, initially kind of manages to cut off two of Grievous's arms, you know, um, once he breaks out the four lightsabers. But in the process of taking out his two arms, she leaves herself open to attack from the other two arms and seems to take a kind of cut across the back. Uh, it doesn't... It makes it seem like she's out of the fight here, but she turns out to be relatively okay here, but... Um, She's still injured, um, and um, yeah, you just have Jet, like the the two notable stormtroopers, Styles and Gray. They're very eager to protect Depa Blaba because they were unable to protect her the last time they fought. So you see them being really loyal just prior to Order sixty six, which is a nice little connection to have here, just showing that like this is their toughest battle, and then the next battle that they have is the one where they're in a way forced to turn. Um, the the big thing though, I suppose, character-wise in the chapter is that obviously Caleb is super angry at Seer here for killing Stance, and he talks about you know there's a power in this anger in the darkness, and that power is very seductive, immersive, all-encompassing. Um, but the big thing that we get is that he said it would be it would be so easy to sink into that pool and never emerge again. But even a Padawan can see that is not the way, not the honorable way to grieve my friend. Not the true path of a Jedi, not even the the means to 
to anything save a ferric victory. So you're, what, I think what we're meant to take from this is just that even though he's been through all of this stuff and he has every reason to kind of give in to his anger, he fundamentally understands that the dark side is not something he ever wants to go down. So I think what, what we're meant to take from this in terms of the present day Kanan is that he is never going to turn to the dark side. He is Jedi through and through. So I think this could come into play a little bit in the Rebels show in the sense of they seem to be setting up Ezra for some sort of a dark side connection, but they're not going to do anything with Kanan. So that could be an interesting conflict depending on how it happens. But yeah, he charges at Seer. He has his lightsaber out and he kind of slides underneath him. And I suppose the page is meant to have you believe that he's just going to run up and straight up like cut him in half. But he has the chance here, as you can see on the bottom uh, panel there, he has the chance to just ignite his lightsaber there and like cut the guy's legs off. Um, but as we cut to the next page, they just, they seem to just have him ignite his lightsaber and slide up behind him. And it makes it seem like, oh, I've got a great advantage because I managed to get behind you, even though the guy, clearly, he j Caleb just lets him turn around. Um, like, especially the top panel there on that page. I have no idea what they're trying to get at there. Like, did he cut him? Did he do anything? But, um, anyway, the guy introduces himself again. You know, I'm Coburn, Seer of Corsite. I'm the Colonel of uh, Confederacy, the con Confederacy of Independent Systems. And I do not seek the mercy of tyrants. Rather, I seek to take those tyrants with me. Um, and basically, he lights himself on fire. I assume as like a desperate act to take out Caleb with himself. Um, I think we're meant to assume that he's basically committing suicide and just taking Caleb down with him. But as he, as Seer charges at Caleb, Caleb cuts him, cuts his head off. Like that, that's what happens here. Like he's forced to defend himself and take this guy out by cutting off his head. And he just says, you know, it's over. The man who killed Stance was dead at my hands, but there's no glory, glory in this triumph. No. There's no glory in this, no triumph. This is the first time I've ever taken a life because he's been mainly fighting droids up to now. And I'd be happy if it were the last. Um, and you can see that the, the other troopers are aware of the seriousness of this. They don't call him kid anymore. And then they kind of spot uh, Balaba who has, you know, st is still fighting Grievous. You know, they're both injured. Grievous is missing two arms. And Balaba has a kind of cut across her back, but she's still fighting strong against Grievous. They basically surround him and force him to retreat, but they're not unable to finish the job. We know Grievous survives until episode three. Um, and basically, they've won. It's been a tough battle, but they've managed to win. But, you know, they've lost Stance and other troopers and stuff like that. And it's interesting, though. And the, the, the big thing he learns here is obviously that the, the, what the development they try to make in regards to this flashback is that in his first battle, he instantly liked the feel of being on the battlefield, having people to support to support you and stuff like that. Um, but he seemed over eager and got injured. Now what he says is, um, the war no longer seems romantic and exciting, yet never have I felt so sure of my place, so filled with purpose, so close to my, you know, friends, colleagues, you know, stuff like that. Um, at what point, at, at this point though, uh, you know, Blab was recovering in a back to tank again, and they're basically saying that the next battle that they're heading for is Kalor, and they're just waiting for the general to heal. And upon <clears throat> him remembering this, in the present day, Kanan wakes up and sees what's happening here. Um, he hears them mention the whole idea of performing the execution here on Kalor. This wakes him up, he uses the force, smashes open the back of the tank, uh, uses the force, grabs his lightsaber, Turns it on, takes out the stormtroopers, and has freed everyone. And we just end with the idea that, okay, they're free, they're no longer captured by anyone, and they're just like, took you long enough, and he said, what, what would you do without me? Interesting, though, uh, Hera says, what she says is, we're all glad you're better, love. So uh, she's she has said this to him before. I think it's one of the season one episodes, and it's the only time she's ever called him that. But there are specific points where Hera does seem to call Kanan love. Um, so that's clearly suggesting some sort of a kind of romantic thing between the two of them in this story. But that's where we end it, going into the last issue. 
And even up to now, there's only one issue left. I have no idea what they're trying to do with regards to this present day story. What's happening on Kalar? I, I kind of forget why they're even on Kalar in the first place and why they're returning here. I assume it's some sort of thing to help the, the rebellion and stuff like that, but uh, they haven't made it awfully clear what's happening. Obviously, Jaller is somewhere nearby. I assume he and Kanan will meet up again, and that will be the big connection they tried to make in the last issue. And he'll probably have some final reflections on who he is now compared to who he was during the flashbacks that we've seen up to now. Um, I don't think I don't see them doing a whole lot with the other characters like Ezra. Um, maybe he, they'll do the whole thing about like he him remembering his master and now he being the master for to Ezra. But I don't see them doing anything with Hera, Sabine, or Zeb, or anything like that. So, you know, solid enough issue with regards to the action and some of the little connections they're trying to make. It's been better than, I suppose, a, a good amount of the issues of this story. But it hasn't been as strong as I think it could have perhaps been. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm eager to see what they do with the last issue. I really am, just because right now, going into it, it just seems like I don't know anything about really what's what's going on. They're obviously, you know, relatively, you know, safe. There's still, I suppose, more troops around them, but they're in a position now where they can fight their way out and make whatever connection they need to make, whatever whatever the reason was, again, that they had to go to Kalar, which, again, I really can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh... You know, it, it, there's one issue left. Um, can they really bring it full circle? This 12-issue series, can they really like finish it off effectively? Uh, as I said, I do think they need to have the, the kind of reflection. Kanan in the present day, either telling his friends or some inner dialogue from present day Kanan, reflecting on who he is now compared to who he was. I think that's ultimately going to be the big emotional thing that they have to do to really get it across. Um, if they don't do that, I think it's a missed opportunity. I can't see them doing any more flashback. Maybe like one or two pages. Um, or maybe they actually, I think what they could do, I think that what would probably work the best, would be to show little moments of the ghost crew coming together. That we ended the first arc of Kanan with him basically having to leave, you know, Jaller and all these other people that he kind of formed bonds with behind this idea that he he always forms these connections and then events cause him to have to leave. I would like to end with the idea of the ghost crew being this thing that in he won't ever leave no matter what or something like that. So him meeting Hera for the first time would be a nice little flashback to have to show the kind of connection between the Padawan on the run going to being, you know, basically going from Caleb to becoming Kanan. Uh, we haven't had that moment yet where we kind of fully establish where the name Kanan came from, the new the new name he has. So, and um, they're the sort of connections I want to see to kind of just finish it off nicely. And I think the reveal of where the name Kanan came from is actually a, a notable enough thing that I'd like to, I think the comic could have, like, that could be its thing that, like, Ultimately, you know, the series wasn't amazing, but we learned where the name Kanan came from. But, uh, yeah, that's been the review of uh, issue number uh, 11. Solid enough, but um, not brilliant. As, I, as as the last kind of big flashback issue, it was solid. You know, t just telling the story of this battle versus Grievous, it was nice to get another kind of Grievous running away kind of situation, as he always seems to do in the Clone Wars. But, um yeah, so I'm going to end the video there. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on the issue and also the review. Other than that, thanks for watching this video, and bye.